How's it going everyone? Javita here with a quick Beacon 101 type tutorial. This was a request by Zykron and since this video will probably literally take me about 20 minutes to throw together and upload, I figured I would get it uh, done essentially immediately. So uh, let's go over some of the basics, get rid of this spitter here. Um, but. When dealing with beacons, there's essentially three items. We have, of course, the beacon control. Uh, technically, I guess the first version of this will be a campfire. Those are kind of like disposable, non-rechargeable beacons. So beacon controls are going to be your first permanent foothold in the world. Uh, there's also the beacon plotter. You can use this to add beacons to, or add plots, excuse me, to an already existing uh, beacon as you can see here and then of course the plot remover so I can add a plot and if I decide I don't like that I can then remove that plot so pretty straightforward uh, as you can see you cannot remove the the final plot on the beacon for that you have to remove all other plots and then finally break the actual beacon control to remove the last plot so in placing a beacon, just simply, whoop, <laughs> wrong button. So in placing a beacon, you simply plop it down, you can uh, activate it, and right now it's not currently fueled. As you can see on the bar up at the top, it says unfueled, and there is no smoke or fire or anything. Uh, when a beacon has less than one week on it, it will smolder, and if it has greater than one week, it'll be a flame. Just give me an example here, put in, uh, you can fuel this with basically any type of uh, leaves, wood, or timber. Each fuel type will have a maximum fuel capacity. So if you use timber, you can fuel a beacon for up to 24 weeks. Uh, leaves will only get you so far, and I believe trunks will only get you so far. But with timber, you can get to that maximum of 24 weeks which is uh, six months if I'm not mistaken. So as you can see, it's technically fueled, but since it's under a week, it's just going to be smoldering. I can put some more leaves in here. Now we're up to five weeks, and now we have a healthy flame. So there'll be varying stages of a beacon that's about to burn out, and that's how you can tell. Also, if you come in here, there's all sorts of options for not only collecting coin out of the coin box, but you can rename the beacon. If your beacon is part of a settlement, there'll be some settlement details, as well as setting this beacon as your home and whether or not strangers may warp into the beacon. Uh, this is like if somebody's trying to teleport to a saved location, whether or not that teleport can be inside of your beacon or not. Of course, there's the fuel section. You can also add permissions to various friends. And if you notice, those two other beacons had colors to them. And you can simply take a piece of gleam. It has to be regular gleam, not refined gleam. And then you can apply a color to it. Without applying any color, it's kind of this uh, white, opaque. And then as you can see over here, there's the blue and red. So specifically, uh, Zykron's question was, he, he wanted to know why you can't have overlapping beacons. So let's say I want to extend the blue one over here and oh, I want another blue one, but wait, it, it won't let me. Uh, this is because the map for the plot is stored as 2D. So as far as the plotting system is concerned, there cannot be two beacons occupying the same vertical space. If you notice, there's these lines that they extend all the way up and they actually extend all the way down as well, as you can see there. A little bit hard to see. Uh, this is also why if you're mining, if you've ever noticed that it says reserved, but then still says wild, uh, if it's somebody else's beacon, it'll actually display the name. It'll be reserved by such and such player. And if you're trying to break something inside of a beacon, it'll say owned by 
dotty dot player. So long story short, you can't have overlapping beacons. Uh, it has to do with the way the the beacon system is saved. Uh, as I said, it's a 2D basically map. Uh, once upon a time, there was a mini map in Boundless, and in the future, there might be another mini map or mapping type system. And at least for displaying beacons and who owns what. Uh, it really only works if it's in a 2D system. Not to mention if you could have overlapping beacons in a vertical space, somebody could come along and basically build on top of you. Uh, the build's height limit I believe is 256, somewhere around in that vague area. So unless you plot it all the way up into the sky, somebody could potentially come along and blot out the sky for you. which wouldn't be fun. Uh, if you don't beacon up into the air, they could still build something, but uh, world regeneration would eventually clean it up for you, or you could uh, clean it up yourself. They cannot permanently put it there. So that is kind of there for both the, both the limitation of the system and basically an anti-griefing type system. So if you're wanting to give somebody, say, permission to uh, a portion of your build, you could split it off and make it its own beacon. Just keep in mind that anything above or below the area that they're going to be accessing will basically be available to them as well. So if you have storage, say, down in your basement, uh, probably not a good idea to be sharing that with somebody else. That's the beacon system in a nutshell. As I said before, if you, uh, you're you trying to remove a beacon altogether, you first have to remove all the plots until only the main plot is left. As you see here, it's saying that you cannot unplot the master beacon control, destroy the control to remove the beacon. So it's basically already done over here, and I can just hit this and eventually it will break. Unplotting the beacon. Uh, keep in mind if you destroy the beacon control and there's coin inside of it, I believe it's destroyed. Uh, there's a small possibility it might be dropped on the ground, but I do know if the beacon burns out, all coin earned by footfall will be destroyed. So some additional notes on Footfall. Footfall is generated by other players passing through your beacon. It's slightly unclear as to whether or not uh, these players being on your friends list will affect Footfall. Uh, I believe I've heard that it's not supposed to affect it. However, if they have permissions to your beacons, like say you have somebody helping you build on your build and they have permissions to it, then I believe that will negate footfall from being generated. But basically the, the vague understanding of how this system works is that once per day a player can pass through your beacon and generate a small amount of coin. This amount is dependent on the rank of your settlement. So right now my settlement is considered a hamlet so that would get me say 40 coins maybe, I don't know exactly. Uh, you do have to meet the minimum settlement requirement so you'll need a certain amount of prestige to be considered a settlement before any footfall will actually be generated. For each rank that it goes up, you get additional coin. So if you have a build in, say, Thurka Market, which is the largest city in Boundless, then each person passing through your beacon would make more footfall than, say, in my small settlement that is only a hamlet. Okay, well I hope you found this video to be helpful. I realize this is probably not the answer Zykron was wanting to hear. He was wanting to essentially have a one of his alts build underneath one of his other builds from another character. Uh, good news is, is that your alts are automatically added as friends, so you simply have to go to the beacon on the character that owns it and you'll be able to add your alternate characters to your builds. So you could go ahead and build but it would technically be considered the same 
uh, build. So one thing's for sure, the beacon system will continue to see changes, tweaks, and improvements. Over the past year that I've been playing Boundless, I've seen numerous tweaks and changes, and with each iteration, it continues to get better. So. Anyway, not exactly the most exciting video in the world, but uh, hopefully you found it to be helpful. This was Javita. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button if you liked the video. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. And if there's anything you didn't like, please let me know down below. Until next time, peace.